thank you, Lucas, uh, for the introduction. Okay, so um, before I start, a uh, quick disclaimer. Um, the idea for this talk originated in the uh, last meeting's talk by Tina Ulbrich, who showed us how to rangeify our code. So if you haven't seen her talk, uh, you can watch a recording from CPP on C on, on YouTube. Um, she used the range v3 library. I'll be using the standard ranges as we will get them in C23. Actually, um, MSVC already has support for everything that, um, that I'll need today. And uh, there are got bold links at the end, so you can see that it actually compiles. Uh, this is slideware, so I didn't const expert all the things, and there is no perfect forwarding when there really should be in places. Okay, so this is the example Tina gave that I want to talk about, and this is a very simple function which just calculates the sliding mean of a window of five elements um, and put outputs these elements into a vector. And she showed us that we can rangeify this code uh, in this way, uh, we are here, we have the slide view, which produces a range of ranges of five elements in this case. And then we apply a transform view, which calculates the mean for each of these uh, windows. And then with the ranges two, which is coming in C++23, we can collect everything up into a vector. Um, so the way that she did it, this function is a drop-in replacement. So it's still returning a vector. Um, and we can use it, for example, here, I'm using the FMT library and um, calculating the sliding mean of an array. And I can process this further, for example, by applying a transform view to round each of these averages down to an integer. But this is eager the way it is done now. So I'm first calculating the vector. This is a heap allocation. So that's nice. Um, so we, we don't like eager evaluation. As programmers, we want to be lazy. So how can we make this code be more lazy? Well, the solution is, is simple. It fits the theme. We just drop the ranges to uh, at the end. And now the return type of this function changes. We're now re returning some expression template. So I'm just inferring the return type here with an auto and um, constraining it with the appropriate concept for added re readability. So in this case, that's random access range that we, we retain here through the transform. Um, and now the code down below is entirely lazy. So all the work is done in the print function in one pass, calculating the sliding means and then rounding them down in just a single loop and there's no heap allocation. So can we be even more lazy than that? Um, and it would be nice if we could input uh, some other range or view pipeline uh, into the sliding mean function. So for example, here I have an IOTA view, which counts from zero to 29. And then I'm using the filter view to fill down a predicate to only keep the even numbers. And that I want to use as the input to sliding mean. Well, this doesn't work with the current version because it's accepting a span and the span needs to be contiguous and sized. Um, so we need to generalize the function to accept an arbitrary forward range. And we do this by uh, turning it into a function template. So now this is using the abbreviated template syntax that came in C20. And I'm constraining the template argument here with a uh, with the appropriate concept. In this case, that's forward range because that's a requirement uh, that slide has. Um, and now it's also returning a forward range. Um, unfortunately, this doesn't compile the way it is currently, and that's because of the mean function. So we have to look at that. Um, this is the version of mean that I used so far, and that's also accepting a span. This worked before because um, the slide view adapter actually retains the contiguity of the input argument. So when we had to span before, all of these subranges that we get from slide are also contiguous ranges and they can bind to a span. Uh, but this is no longer the case. So we need to generalize this function as well. And we can do this again by turning it into a function template. And in this case, the appropriate concept here is sized range because we need to um, get the, the size of the range in order to calculate the average. 
Um, now there's a, another problem and that's the reduce function that I'm using here to sum up all the elements is from the numeric header and the numeric algorithms have not been rangified in either C++ 20 or 23, unfortunately. And so I need to use the version which uses iterators, begin and end, but ranges can have different types for their begin and end iterators. So we need to use a little trick here where we have the views common range adapter, which ensures that the begin and end iterators of the range have the same type. And then it works also with C17 style algorithms. So this is fine. This function compiles in itself, but we still can't use it in this way because um, mean is now a function template and we cannot name it just that way uh, without specifying the template arguments, which would be very difficult in this case. Um, so we can fix this by turning it into a function object. So in this case, just a Lambda. So now mean is itself no longer a template, but it's just one object which has a generic call operator. And then we can use it the way that we want to. So this is nice. So this code sample here now compiles um, and everything is done lazily, which is, is great. It, it's generating all the numbers, it's filtering, it's calculating the sliding means and it's transforming. Um, but it's a little bit awkward to write. And it's also what's worse, even potentially confusing because if we had the, the eager version of sliding mean in our code base before, then um, if we didn't get the heads up that there was a refactoring and now it's lazy, we might end up doing work twice because we think we're caching the, the result of the sliding mean calculation, but we're only caching the expression, expression template. So it would be much nicer if we could just write it in one straight range pipeline like this. Um, but this is unfortunately very difficult to do in C20 without defining the pipe operator in the std ranges namespace. And that would be undefined behavior um, because we're not al allowed to inject into standard namespaces with few exceptions. Um, fortunately, in C23, there's a paper by Barry Refson, which is accepted and already implemented in MSVC actually, which adds a CRTP base class called range adapter closure. And by inheriting from range adapter closure and moving our function, basically it becomes the, the call operator of this function object. Um, we can enable this kind of pipeline behavior. So with this, we can actually write the pipeline just like we want to. Um, and that's, that's a great customization point. And it's honestly not that much boilerplate you have to write, but there's actually a much simpler way to do the same thing in this case. And for that, I'd like to circle back to the title of the talk, namely that the pipe operator is associative. What does that mean? Um, so it means that instead of applying the slide adapter to a range and then applying the transform adapter to the resulting range, we can also think of it as combining, composing the slide ad uh, adapter with the transform adapter to form one composite range adapter and then apply that to the range that we want to apply it to. And with this idea in mind, we can just write the whole thing like this. We can just write a sliding mean is equal to the composition of slide with uh, our window size and the transform adapter with the mean function, which has to be um, gen has to be still the generalized mean function object that we came up earlier. And um, this also works. And this is just a one line of code or two lines, depending on how wide your screen is. And it's it's much nicer, I think. It's, um, it's akin in a way to point-free pro programming in functional programming languages, where you can define functions by composing together other functions or um, applying higher order functions. Uh, and another nice thing about this is that the constraints of the, the slide view, that it needs a forward range uh, in order to work, they just carry over to the whole thing. Um, so I, I don't need to look them up and uh, apply them here. Again, uh, they are just carried over. 
And the whole thing also works in C++20 without the need for the customization support paper. Um, so yeah, I, I thought this was a nice little way to um, simplify this function. And uh, with that, I'm, I'm done. Uh, if you scan the QR code here or follow the link, you will find um, a blog post where I have got both links to all the code samples I have. And you can find me online uh, at all of these places.